Road. Nice you know meet. how to make a flat white? Uh, depends. I've made flat whites and I've had no complaints. <laughs> Thanks for having us. We're really well. We made the trip down all the way from the mountains to the heaven of coffee in Vancouver. But you're going to show me a little bit about your place. Yes, of course. So there's consumer, prosumer, and then commercial. We've got a wide range of the machines as well as the accessories. We're also authorized dealers, which means we're also servicing them. The beauty about having this size of a showroom here is you guys actually invite people to come around and learn how to make coffee. We have classes on the weekends, but we also just invite people to come and try our machines on a weekday during store hours. And, you know, our, our staff are always really happy to show them how to use the machine and make great coffee at home. you got this new machine of yours going, eh? This one? Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, uh, Ranchilio has decided to uh, do something pretty cool with this one. You have temperature profiling over the time of the shot. For certain coffees, I want to have it go cooler at the end of the shot. So what it'll do is it'll mix cold water into the boiler as it pours the shot. Apart from having crazy technologies in it to make your coffee that much better, your grinder is really what's making a good shot or a bad shot. Let's see here. So what are you waiting for? You, you're hoping for how long? So we're looking at the time here. So this will pull two ounces every time. So that should take 25 seconds, give or take two and a half seconds. Makes a big difference in flavor. Cappuccino machines and coffee. Where did it start for you? I actually wanted to roast coffee back in the late 80s. And I decided that espresso machines was a more interesting business for me. There's probably 150 espresso machine brands in Italy. We carry Rancilio, which is the number one espresso machine manufacturer in the world by sales volume. We also carry some La Marzocco, Rocket. The thing with coffee is you're making it several times a day, every day. The market after a while tends to split off into two different categories. There's the people that at that point want to go with the super automatic machine where they just push a button and so they opt for a cleaner experience where the machine does the work. And then the other half of the market decides that they want to go to a, a more sophisticated machine where they're still in control of making the whole process of the coffee and the grinding and the steaming of the milk. And that's where you get now into the uh, heat exchanger machines, the double boiler machines and so on, which is what Rocket carries. Andrew, it's been quite a bit of a roller coaster ride, at least for us trying to keep up with you guys. Ever since we heard the story about this Kiwi that moved to Italy to go and teach Italians how to make coffee machines. We don't want to just sell the machine and that's it. Those machines should last 25, 30 years. We want people to love the fact that they own a rocket. I think our name commercially is only starting to come up now. If we can keep that level of finish and quality going, that, that's important to us. We would rather do less numbers, but make better machines. On the commercial side, I think the baristas are getting more demanding. The baristas are always experimenting. You have a traditional Italian style of espresso, which the Italians still think is the best. And then over in North America here, where we have people experimenting with lighter roasts, more citric, what we call fruit forward. And the machines and the grinders needs to meet some of that demand. If you use an Italian style of espresso, it's very forgiving. So. All the machines from years gone by up until right now, uh, they tend to do a good job on that. But the more that you sort of venture off from that tried and true, the more help the coffee bean needs or the more uh, specific it gets. And so, for example, if you're using a, uh, I'll give these single origins, which are quite popular right now, pressure profiling helps. Uh, temperature profiling helps. Having PID or better temperature stability helps coax the most flavor out of the bean. All businesses grow and they get bigger. And sometimes when they get bigger, they lose a lot of their heart and soul. But when we walk in here, we still get a lot of enthusiasm about coffee and enthusiasm about the technology around. I like the fact that you have a bar here where people can just come in and make their own coffee. Do you drink a lot of coffee still, Rich? Oh yeah, we, we, I only drink espresso. Any potential customer comes to the door, uh, the very first thing we'll do is we'll offer them an espresso and give them what we think is a good tasting espresso. They'll taste it and they'll go, wow, that's actually good. And our answer to that is, well, yeah, it's supposed to be good. Uh, in order of importance, the coffee, you can't serve a better espresso than what you start with. Uh, the grinder, the operator, and the machine is actually the least important. 
All right, now crunch time. <laughs> Pressure is on. I love it. This is good coffee. 